Preston. William Lowe and I are here again to do another roadmap discussion. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about some adaptive techniques that you can employ around your house to make your life uh, post-stroke um, a little easier. And uh, so, William, you have uh, some thoughts on, on this. So why don't you start us off as you usually, like you usually do? Uh, yeah, sure thing. So I think this is a, um, I think in every strokes barber's journey, um, it's always worthwhile to to have a little bit of a think about how you can adapt in your life after you've had a stroke, because as every strokes barber has experienced, at the start of their journey, it can be quite messy and it can take some time to regain some semblance of in, independence and move towards um, the quality of life which you used to have before your stroke. Uh, quite often, quite often when stroke survivors are actually discharged from the hospital and they run out of insurance, um, there's actually a high risk of them actually falling at home and not being able to do things because they're not able to walk for one. And also number two, they they're obviously not as mobile as they used to be, and they have limited use of their limbs as well. So I think I think. Um, the topic which we're covering this week, adaptive techniques, it's it's quite important because it can be really useful, especially if you're a stroke survivor in the early days of your recovery after stroke. And maybe you're and maybe you're still receiving uh therapy through insurance. Um and if you're thinking about the next steps, let's say once you finish finish or finish your therapy and you run out of insurance and you're discharged from hospital, then it might be worthwhile to have a little bit of a think about some of the things that Ralph and I are going to be covering in this roadmap, because some of these might be really beneficial for you, especially when you get discharged and you start to, I guess, uh, integrate and and move back into what life is going to be like outside of the hospital when you're um, by yourself at home. So, so these so these adaptive. Um, techniques which we're going to be talking about today they're basically um some of the things which you can do to problem solve or help you do some things which might be a little bit more difficult than they compared to before your stroke um after after you've had a stroke so for example um let's say if you've just had a stroke you might find that it could be quite tricky for you to uh return to things such as uh, going to the bathroom and and having a shower. Um, obviously, there is the risk of falling and obviously there is the risk of trying to maintain your balance in the shower because obviously the floor is going to be quite slippery um, and, and a potential fall could obviously lead to setbacks. So I guess, I guess when it comes to adaptive techniques, basically these are things which you can do or you can modify in your home to help you become more independent and do things which you otherwise wouldn't be able to do because you might have some limitations following your stroke, which might be stopping you from actually being able to do them. So, so I'm just going to start us off with just giving some examples, I guess, of some basic things you could do around the house to make sure that you're safe when you go home um, after you've run out of insurance. And the first thing I I think is important to consider is obviously uh, having a look at the way that you set up your bathroom or your bathroom setup, because if you're going to be um, taking care of yourself and if you're going to be taking a shower when you go home, or if you plan on taking a shower, it might be a wise idea to consider having some grab rails installed in your um, shower. Let's say if you have a cubicle shower, a shower recess, um, so that you have something to hold on when you're actually standing up and you're taking a shower um, and you have that reassurance that should you fall, that you have something to to actually stop you from falling over. Um, another thing I would also, I would also uh, consider getting is something which is called a shower chair, which is basically a uh, water-resistant chair, which you can have placed inside a cubicle shower or a shower recess if that's your setup. So that rather than then showering while standing up, you can take a shower safely while you're sit while you're sitting down in your shower cubicle, knowing 
knowing that you're not going to fall and knowing that you are uh, knowing that you can safely shower in independently without having to yell out for help uh, because you know that you're sitting down and you're able to control everything at the same time. Um, another thing I want to add on to that is if you do, if you do have a setup, a bathroom setup such that you have a shower over a bathtub, something you might want to consider getting is something called a bath board, which is basically a uh, which is basically a board or a uh, which is basically a uh, sort of surfboard sort of type thing, um, which you can put on top of your bathtub, um, so that you can sit on it and you can use your non affected hand to slide over your legs over the bath board so that your legs are hanging over the board and you're able to shower while while sitting on the board on top of your bathtub um, with the shower head on top of you like so. Um, so I think I think these are all all great things to consider. Um, but if you really want to take it to the next level, another thing you could get to really make sure that you're able to become as a as independent as possible uh, when it comes to the bathroom is getting something called a to a uh, toilet commode, which is basically a frame which you can put around your toilet, which is elevated so that when you're going to the bathroom and when you're going to the toilet, you won't need to sit down. You won't need to sit down all the way down to your toilet seat, but rather you'll be sitting at an elevated position to obviously do your business. And when you're sitting down at an elevated position, with these rails around you and 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 Ralph will provide links to all these equipment uh, below um, so you so you'll see what we're talking about here what this does is it allows you to sit down in the toilet um, and do your business knowing that you have something to hold on to in case you lose your balance and 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 fall to the side of the toilet as as well so I think I think when it comes to uh when it comes to um, adaptive techniques, when you go home, in terms of helping you to maintain your independence or move towards a higher quality of life, uh, particularly in recovery after stroke, especially in the early stages, it might be worthwhile to consider some pieces of, of equipment like I've outlined here to just make it a little bit easier for you to do things which you might otherwise not be able to do because you might have some temporary limitations which might be stopping you from being able to do things in a safe manner uh, for example like i mentioned um, when you're taking a shower it might be worthwhile to consider having some grab rails in store or having a chair in there with you so that you can sit down if you're fatigued or if you're tired or obviously with the grab rails you have something to hold on to while you're showering so that let's say if you do slip you have that reassurance of having knowing that that rail is there to, to to stop you from falling um, and and obviously having a disaster when you're having a shower. So those are basically um, all the things I want to cover in terms of, you know, adaptive equipment. And there's also other things which, um, Ralph, you and I, we had a discussion before before this about, which, which we would also like to cover um, to really help you folks out who are watching this. Um, really, uh, I guess, gain as much independence as possible when it comes to transitioning to what it feels like to live by yourself without the help of hospital staff when you get discharged from the hospital. So, so Ralph, I just wanted to pass it on to you. Um, after sharing all that, um, obviously you and I, we had a discussion before this. Did you have any thoughts to add to uh, any of that um, based on your own experiences as a stroke survivor? as well as helping other survivors um, in their recovery as well. Sure. Before we leave the bathroom, because there's other places around the house that you might benefit from changing some things. Um, let's see. Shower chairs. Uh, they're kind of small and they're kind of low. I actually prefer the, if you have a tub, uh, they make a thing called a shower bench. Two legs sit inside, two legs sit outside. They don't move around. I'm familiar with that board that you're talking about, and some of them attach. Um, 
the thing I like about the shower bench is part of it's outside, which means you can pull up to it and transfer kind of outside the of the bathtub and then scoot yourself over. Actually, if you want to spend an extra 50 bucks or whatever, they make it with a little sliding chair and you and you can lock the chair on the outboard position, transfer to it, unlock it and and slide it. Uh, people who can't transfer much very well at all or who um, uh, require something like a Hoyer lift to get in and out of bed or chairs or out of the wheelchair, they're probably going to need, um, they make a shower wheelchair. It's like basically a rubberized wheelchair. It looks like a, you're sitting on a toilet seat and you can take the shower wand and get everywhere. Believe me, I took a few showers in them. Um, you know, grab bars are great, but you're not likely to have them on day one unless you know that uh, some, actually that's not true because I know uh, of a couple of caregivers that uh, knew that their loved one would be coming home and had grab bars installed in advance. But a lot of these things, like I got sent home without a shower chair. I went to take a shower and uh, I went, a shower bench and I went, or actually a little teeny chair and I thought they tipped over. As soon as I could stood, I never didn't get down on it anymore. But they sent me home without one, so uh, you know it's quite possible that y y you won't think of something until you get home and have to try and do it. Uh, now these are not to be trusted on a permanent basis, but they make suction cup um, grab bars. That's a fairly short one. Uh, I say they're not to be trusted. I wish I knew what this brand is. It's the only one I've ever found that I basically can't rip off. And here's a much bigger one. So you might rely on them a little bit. Like I said, they're not to be trusted. They're not like a 300 pound rated uh, stainless steel grab bar. That, But those you have to drill holes through the tiles and install them into studs. It's something that basically a contractor needs to do. Uh, the Those little things that go around the toilet are great. Uh, the main reason is you don't have to um, get down so far. Uh, toilets are pretty low and they're pretty hard to get out of. And some people actually fall getting onto them because they expect that they're going to be there sooner than they are. Let's see what else we got in, in terms of the bathroom. Um, this is an adaptive thing, but if you're starting to stand... Um, this is a little t trick I learned in um, hotel bath bathtub shower. So a lot of times you go to a hotel, they got a bathtub. It's got grab bars. You, you grab the grab bar, you step over it. Maybe the grab bar is in a good position when you're standing there. Maybe it's not, or maybe they don't have one. I've been in where they don't have them. Okay, so here's a this is something you can adapt in the way you do something to your environment as opposed to adapting your environment to what you can't do. And that is, um, if you ever try, if you, when you stand in the shower on a soapy floor, your feet slide out. Your feet can't slide in. I've never, I've tried it. It's impossible. So your feet are always going to slide out. So one thing I did with the bathtub was I put my feet all the way to the outside against the two walls and stand there. That way your feet can't slide. They can slide forward or backwards, but they typically slide out. So that's a little technique. Um, I guess I'll just keep going on, William, because there are other places in the in the house um, that um, wh where some adapting can um, can happen and be beneficial. So I wanted to get out of the wheelchair as soon as I could, and so I did, and I started doing some wall walking, walking with your hands down the wall. You're kind of walking sideways. Um, well, that's great as long as you can get to the wall, but a lot of times, you know, you're at a table and the wall's way over there, that kind of thing. So, um, we had a big, uh, kitchen with a dining room table and the master bathroom and the living room were off of that room and I needed to get to both of them. And so, but I couldn't walk across the room. So I did something called, you know, I called it today the trail of furniture. I took some of the dining room chairs and I put one between the table and the wall and the door frame to the bathroom. So I could make it from cooking or doing something in the kitchen to the kitchen island to the 
dining room table. And then I had one chair going to the bathroom and I had two or three that made it all the way to the kitchen. So I had something, of course, your the rest of your family has to agree to, you know, moving the furniture around, but that's an idea, a uh, temporary idea, because I got better and better at wall walking and, uh, and well, regular walking across the room and eventually was able to do that. Uh, also, one of the things we did was we took some, because I was going down the walls, we took down a couple of pictures, uh, pic frame pictures. Um, another thing it's handy to do around the house if you're in a wheelchair is look at all the spaces that the person in the wheelchair would have to get and make sure that they can get there, that they don't have a piece of furniture that's, you know, two inches too narrow and they can't get through there, you know, widen out things. Uh, think about the, the places that, um, you're going to have to go, or if you're the caregiver that your loved one's going to have to, to go, uh, I guess I can keep going with this. Um, one thing, you know, if you have, um, steps in your house, that's great because you can use steps for a number of things in your rehab, like learning how to go up and down them. You can do heel raises and toe raises on the bottom step. If you have something to hold on to a lot of, um, houses have one, uh handrail on one side if you can't go up and down steps very well that means depending on whether the what side is your strong side and what side the the handrails on you might be able to go up but not down have to back down or you might have to back up and, and come down so you could think about installing another um handrail uh, some people I know have installed a number of grab bars out in their house. William, I think you know somebody who did it in the hallway. I know somebody who did it in a part of the uh, a larger room that they had. I did 16 feet of them in, uh, in a stroke survivor's uh, closet because she didn't have a place to, to a hallway. And she could use them for um, walking. The other thing you can do is you can turn sideways and you can do your marching and your squats and everything because you're going to put them at basically the same height that you would grab onto. Now, I, I, in that case, I used um, uh, stair rails, hand rails from the stairs. Why? Because they're a lot cheaper. You can, you're going to want to screw everything to the studs, um, but they're a lot cheaper than stainless steel grab bars. And the other thing is you can find three and maybe four foot uh, uh, stainless steel grab bars but they don't make them any longer than that and you can buy the, the handrail stuff in 10 12 foot lengths so um there's that so william why don't i toss it back to you and talk about uh some more things that can be adapted uh yeah sure thing um so i mean i just want to highlight everything that ralph has said uh these are all these are all really good ideas uh, when it comes to when it comes to really adapting your your um, home so that so that you can regain as much independence as possible or have as much independence as possible in your recovery after stroke, especially in the early days. And as some of you folks may have noticed uh, while watching us have this discussion, the the overarching theme of all of these um, adaptations or all of these ideas is to really make sure that you're safe when you go home and when you're exercising at home. Um, obviously, Ralph has mentioned having grab rails around the house, having grab rails down 10-yard uh, stretches in your house where maybe you might be walking down a long hallway um, just so you can use that grab rail as, an, as, as a form of assistance to help you maintain your sense of balance. Um, scattering the furniture in ge as, as ge geographical landmarks so that you could hold on to something um, to brace yourself in case you do fall between where you're at in a certain destination, all of these things, the whole purpose of all of these things, in addition to the things which I've mentioned in the bathroom, um, having a chair, having a chair or a frame around you when you go to the toilet, um, having a chair with you when you're taking a shower, or what Ralph mentioned about uh, having a particular stance when you take a shower, all of these things, they're 
we we are suggesting these things because they're essentially allowing you to do things which you typically would have done before you had your stroke in a more independent way and also in a more in 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 a very safe way so that you can actually prevent a a potential fall from happening because at least from what I know, from what I've been told from other stroke survivors and what I've personally seen is that if you do have a fall in your recovery after stroke, not only does it affect your self-esteem, but it can also affect your confidence. And this in turn leads to a worse recovery. And it can actually get in your head from actually achieving your best possible recovery possible. So um, on that note, I just want to add on to what Ralph mentioned about the grab rails. Um, I think... I think I think grab rails are great because obviously you can you can use use them as an incentive to uh, continue to do exercises at home like you would have in the hospital, such as uh, your your um, lower limb or your leg exercises. Um, you can have grab rails installed at the kitchen, or you can have grab rails installed, obviously down you know a long uh, hall, hallway stretch. Let's say if you have like a five or ten yard stretch of hallway in your home you can have those rail grab rails there to help you uh, uh to 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 help you do some exercises like you would have in the parallel bars when you're in hospital so if you have a home and you happen to have a lot of rugs and carpets in your home these rugs and carpets they can actually present as a potential falls risk especially if you're in the early days of your recovery after stroke in that whenever you're walking at home and let's say your ability to lift up your leg or your hip it's not that strong that you can actually clear the ground there's actually a risk that your toes can actually catch on these carpets and that can actually result in a fall so one thing you can do to actually prevent these potential falls from happening and reducing these trip hazards is by actually using some tape to actually tape down these carpet corners so that they actually don't lift up let's say if you get into a situation where you're where your toes get caught on the carpet and and by taping down the corners of these carpets it can actually stop you from actually tripping over carpets around the house which which would obviously result in a fall so 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 that's so that's another really good thing you can do to really adapt your home so that you can i guess be as safe as possible and be as independent as possible when you get discharged from hospital and obviously, when you have that increased independence, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to for you to perform exercises like you would have uh, when you were in the hospital. So, as you can see, um, with all the things that Ralph and I have covered, we've got the grab rails along the hallways, um, we've got the uh, taping down the carpets around the home. All of these things essentially they prevent you from having having any injuries or having any setbacks in your recovery, which which in turn are going to allow you to, I guess, achieve your best recovery possible by having a safe environment at home for you to perform your exercises independently um, because obviously when you get discharged from hospital, you're not going to have your own physical therapist there to help help you through the process and tell you how to do things in a safe way. Um, a lot of the things that Ralph and I have covered, it's it's pretty much just problem solving and just making sure that you're safe at home and you're able to maintain the same amount of independence that you had before your stroke or you're able to do things which you otherwise can't because of your limitations after stroke in a very safe manner. So so I've covered a lot there, Ralph, and I just want to pass it back to you. I know you had some thoughts around uh, taping down carpets and taping down rugs Um around the house to make yourself safe. Um, and for the folks watching, perhaps you would like to share these thoughts. Sure. Um, they actually make two-sided carpet tape uh, for this. I know when you when you look this up, you'll see pictures of people duct taping the outside of the carpet, which if you leave duct tape very long, it's going to make a mess on both the floor and the, and the carpet. Anyway, um, I found that if you with the two-sided tape, if you get close to the corner, you, you, the corner won't come up. So uh, it achieves the same thing. Most of the time you trip over a carpet because you get your uh, one or other of your toes underneath it. So 
there's that. There are a couple of other things real quick. We, they said would finish up in the bathroom. Well, this isn't in the bathroom. So if you have real mobility issues, we talked about the things that the frames that go around the toilet that raise you up some so you don't have to go down so far. But another thing is uh, particularly people living alone, they don't want to be transferring uh, to the wheelchair or the toilet in the dark in the middle of the night. So a lot of people get what's called a bedside commode. It basically looks like one of those frames. Uh, it sits a little higher, like one of those frames. Uh, just imagine one of those frames with a bucket underneath it that slides out and it can be emptied. So could consider if somebody's got really um, mobility issues, especially in the middle of the night. I know a couple of stroke survivors that use the bedside commode only at 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 night and have a other uh, strategy for the daytime let's see a couple other things that sometimes get recommended is you know your basic wheelchair sliding board is basically a piece of wood like that long you can put it underneath like one of your hips and, and when you're in the wheelchair and slide up to a bed or down to a chair or whatever the like, uh, therapists use them a lot. Uh, I know somebody who just got a transfer pole. Um, basically, you got a floor to ceiling pole, and she's going to use it to uh, transfer out of her. She put it by her bed. She's going to transfer out of the bed to the wheelchair, out of the wheelchair, back into the bed. She's also going to practice sit to stands either from the wheelchair or from the bed. Now, a lot of these work off of tension which means you have to tighten them. So if you're going to have a, like a sheetrock ceiling, you want to put a piece of wood or something that'll spread it out the forces so you don't ruin the ceiling and tighten the heck out of it and pull straight down because if you pull it towards you, you're going to torque it out of there and, and have an issue. But I know several people that have those. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Uh, oh, in the kitchen... They make things like adaptive cutting boards, and you can get various kinds of, um, uh, William, you mentioned using a cheese knife that's got a big curve on the end for cutting your meat. One thing, if you don't have an adaptive cutting board, one thing you can get is something called an Alaska knife. It'll cut anything. It'll cut meat because you could actually rock it on your plate. It also, some of these come with uh, an uh, equally dished out, see if I can do this with, yeah, there you can see that the uh, shape of the indentation matches the knife exactly. So you can put anything in there from nuts to green beans to onions or whatever and just chop it up and one-handed until you're, until you're done. Uh, let's see, you got two other things real quick. Uh, staying in the house and falling. Uh, in Australia, William, you said you have something called uh, vital call. Here they call it life alert, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. And uh, those that's kind of service, particularly if you live alone, uh, might be useful if you don't have somebody around in case you have an emergency. Another thing I do is whenever I'm doing anything where I have any potential or I'm outside or whatever, I keep my cell phone with me in my pocket, not over there. Um, and... The one thing about those services is that they are um, they're on the, kind of on the way out because of smartwatches. So this is an Apple smartwatch, and you can also get this on. Um, uh, I should bop it and see if I can get it to do it. Uh, modern watches, smartwatches have fall detection, so I can actually program this watch to call it. It actually asks me if I slam the lid on my uh, car on the back of my station wagon sometimes, it says it looks like you've fallen. And you say, no, I haven't fallen, or yes, I have. If you don't do anything, it's gonna call 911. You can also program it to call your husband, your daughter, your mother, your or, or, uh, somebody else in your family, I think up to three people. So those are pretty much um, the, what I was thinking about, um, one thing about the grab bars down the hall or the rails down the hall is you can use them later. Same with you getting any temporary grab bars, these suction grab bars. 
After you get your permanent ones installed in the bathroom, you can use them on the counters to do all your um, at-home exercises. Because another theme of roadmap is you get better at home. So once you can do some of these functional things and safely, uh, then you want to get uh, onto your exercise program, I would say. I would. So that's it, William. you have anything else? or? Oh, uh, well, I mean... I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess I do have one more thing to add and I just want to add on to your, to, uh, to what you mentioned about the, uh, of the, uh, smartwatches, um, so, and those, and those devices to let someone know that you've fallen. So these are great because if you do happen to have a fall, um, and you're by yourself, they will actually call 911 for you or a, uh, close, close, close person to you, whether that be family or your six significant other to actually let you know that you need help. Um, so these are especially great for stroke survivors. Um, and I think it would be really worthwhile to get one if you're if you're worried that, you know, you might actually be at risk of falling and you're living by yourself. Um, I, think, I think the last thing I want to cover is just the idea of just learning how to, uh, learning how to transfer correctly. Um, and for those of you who aren't sure, transfer is basically a uh, physical therapist word to describe, you know, moving from one place to another. Um, so just knowing the correct way to, I guess, move one, one from one place to another when when you're um, returning home, um, especially and and this applies to getting into your bathtub or getting getting in and out of the car. So, so generally speaking, when it comes to uh, Going upstairs or getting into a bathtub or or getting into a car, what you want to do is you want to lead with your good side first or your good leg first. This way, your good leg is actually going to take on the majority of your weight as you move into as you move into um as you move into you know let's say the shower or let's say um the car and. And then once you've done that, you can actually, um, once you've done that and you're already stabilized your weight with a good leg, then your good leg is actually going to be able to support you so that you can bring your weaker leg in at the same time as well. And this applies mainly to your car, where where let's say if you're learning to get in and out of a car um, from a wheelchair, what you would do is you would stand up first and you would go bum first into the, into the car. So what that would mean is that you would rotate your body so that your bum is facing the car and you would go and bum first and sit down on the chair and then use and then use your hands to swing your legs into the uh, car at the same time. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and it's just always worthwhile to, uh, I guess, think a, a couple of steps ahead before you actually do something, especially once you're discharged from hospital um, and you're trying to think about how to move move from one place to another um and and as those of you who are watching my may have noticed a lot of the things that ralph and i have covered in this roadmap it's it's about problem solving and really thinking things thinking things through before you do them especially now that you've been discharged from the hospital um there's no physical therapist who is going to tell you how to do something or guide you how to do things um in a safe way while also staying independent um, a lot of the things that Ralph and I have suggested, such as using the grab rails, these allow you to do things which you want to do in a very safe and independent way so that you don't have to overthink, um, but so that you can maximize your chances of success and also know that you can exercise um, and maximize your recovery while you're at home, while also staying safe at the same time. So that's that's pretty much everything I want to add. Um and yeah, I don't think there's anything else to cover unless you have anything you want to add on to. Well, that I more. got one more I forgot. A couple, couple quick things. Transferring sounds like a good subject for uh, another roadmap discussion one day. Because um, you could certainly spend a good amount of time on just transferring alone. And uh, when you said that uh, about transferring, I remember that I didn't mention one of the places you transfer is in and out of the car. You mentioned that putting your, your butt in first and swinging your legs in. Uh, one of the things that um, 
one of the best uh, money you can spend is they make a little called pistol grip. It basically it's like it looks like a handle or grip, and it's got a peg on it, and that peg goes into the. All cars have a little square thing on the back side of the door. It's the same on every vehicle manufactured everywhere in the world. And these things sit right in there, and it gives you like a very, very sturdy um, hand grip. It's about six or seven inches long, and you can push yourself up or let yourself down. Um, they range from $10 to $30. There's no difference between them unless you want like one of them has a flashlight in it. I don't know why you'd want that. Uh, and some of them are 30 bucks. So find one of the nine, 10 or $12 ones. Uh, I'll try and post some, like William said, I'll try and post some um, links to some of the things that we've um, talked about in case you're not familiar with them. And uh, I guess unless you have something else, William, well, we'll see everybody next time on Roadmap. Uh, nope, that's it. Thanks, Ralph.